and you had those people that were anti-creation and they would come in and they would shout at us and they would scream and say that uh, this should be forbidden, there's no such thing as God and everything is evolution and the city should never have allowed you to speak here and they wanted to take us to court and it was chaos, but the people, they came. And I don't want to give any more details on what I really experienced in the police office happening to some people that were there. It was tough. And with a very heavy, difficult heart, I left from Namibia down the West Coast coming to South Africa. And I ended up in a place that calls Hartenbos because I knew it was Easter, and you would be the key speaker. And there was a special event going on, I heard. So I went there, and I gave you note of it, and you said you're going to be there. So I arrived somewhere very late evening after the last lecture, and I saw you standing in the midst of a huge tent with barely any lights on. I approached you right away. I said, here I am. And you know the funny thing is, that really shook me. In Australia, which was about nine months before, I approached you and I said, Ha! I know what the mark of the beast is! <laughs> I told you. He said, what is it? I said, it's the barcode. And he said, it's not. I said, what? It's not a barcode. What did you answer? Well... If I answered you, I can't remember what I answered, but I would have told you that it has to do with the authority of God and his law and that the other is a counterfeit or something similar. Being an Adventist, I didn't know that. Can you imagine? Very poorly educated, but it was my own fault. I can't blame anyone else. But I asked you in heart and boss in the tent, do you remember who I am? And you know what you said to me? What did I say? You said you are the barcode guy. Okay. You said that. I remember you well. I said, how does that happen? How many people has he met so far since then and at that meeting? And I felt that sort of a little sign, a confirmation that was important for me to give me the possibility to talk to you about it. And you said, what would you like? I said, I have got the impression to do a movie on creation. And you confirmed that's a good idea. And I said, uh, would you like to be part of it. Could, you, could I arrange you as a speaker? And you said, go speak to Stan Zedelbar about that from Amazing Discoveries Germany because he's arranging all my speaking appointments. Talk to him about it. And I left the camp meeting not before I saw something special. I saw a row of like 40, 50, 60 pastors that were putting their hands on top of the shoulder, one another, a whole row. And right in the front, in the middle, something wonderful happened. There were you and your wife, Sonica. That was my ordination. That was your ordination. Yes, as a pastor in the church. Yeah. It was Francis Law. It was the president, I Francois believe. Francois Law, yes. Francois Law. And there and were some American pastors. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. Yeah. 
and you were ordained as a pastor. And I said, thank you, Lord. I witnessed that with my own eyes, and it was... You took some pictures. Yes. It was a very special event. Yes, it was. And uh, I knew God is now having a new job to do for you. And some of those American evangelists, they're no longer with us, but they were all there, yes. I left fully confident that this is my new way to go. So what I, what I did on the way to the airport, everything was forgotten with the images in Namibia. I said, God, you must replace them. It's your work. However you're going to do it, you'll do it. I was so confident. And I gave Stan a call and I said, Stan, Stan, I just met Walter and I'm going to come to support Amazing Discoveries. And he said, yes, yes, just come. I knew Stan from, from very, many years. We were playing volleyball together in, in a team. And uh, he wouldn't believe me because he knew that I wasn't in church really. But that was before the trip. Uh -huh. That brought a major change to my life. So I went back to Germany. And having had the graphics company, I... I said, okay, Lord, how can, I, how can I support you? And I started doing graphic design for Amazing Discoveries Germany. And um, I heard a lot about you. I saw you coming, doing some lectures. But there was still the issue with Silva and me. What should we do now? She was in Austria. I was in Germany. And I remembered that night in Namibia at a campfire, I picked up the phone and I said, you have to call her now. And uh, sorry. I said, <clears throat> how are we going to continue? And she said, um, if we're preparing for the end times, we have to be married. I don't want that. <laughs> and she said, we have to. There's no other way. If you come back and uh, you're not marrying me, um, we have to split. So I said, okay, <clears throat> we must do it. How are we going to do it? I don't know, but we'll come back and talk about that. So I went back. We went for many walks. And we said, okay, okay, okay. I I I'm going to marry you. You know what, we're going to call the pastor somewhere in the U.S. and we just go there, we don't tell the family, and then we're going to get married. She says, ah, it's not a bad idea, but I don't think that's going to work. And lo and behold, it was the name, Walter Fight coming up. And I said, oh, should we call him? How should that work? Should we go to South Africa? And she said, no. Um... We'll talk to him if he could marry us at one of his next campaigns in Europe. And so we gave you a call. We had your number. And you said, yes, I'll do it. You picked up and you said, yes. I said, I looked at you and said, is that true? 
He's going to marry us? Yes. You were an ordained pastor. There was no, no problem whatsoever. But when? And then you said, talk to Stan when, it, when my next campaign will take place. And I'll come, we'll do it. And it was in Blue Dance, Austria, somewhere in the mountains. And it was in June. So we went to the official government thing. Yes, we have to have the official ceremony with the government stamp on it. Yeah. It was you and Petra and Stan and Sven, Silva and me. And we went there. It was in Lindau, Bodensee. And then we went on to Bludenz, which is not too far off. It was a sunny day on the 20th of June. And on the 21st of June, it was pouring rain. There was just so much rain all over the place. And I had bought a lot of chairs for IKEA to have an outside wedding, but it didn't take place. It was a very comfortable, beautiful setting. And how did we do it? Well, you said, sent me in your information about your life and about your history and so on. And we did that, you prepared, and it was in the midst of an, of an evangelistic campaign they called the Blue Dance Serie. And in the morning we had the wedding. It was a marvelous day. And you preaching with whatever Bible you had and turning around a wine vessel and just put a your... A yes. Yeah, yeah. And it was marvelous. It was a great, great day. Only the stuff from Amazing Discovery was present. The whole team, none of her family, none of my family. And a dear friend of mine who came, he knew about that. He drove like 350 kilometers to be part of that wedding. So in the evening, you continued on with the... Now the amazing thing is, we didn't really know each other. We had these short meetings, one in Australia, then in Europe, then in Africa. And uh, every time there was just a short connection. But when we did the marriage ceremony, that brought about a stronger connection mm -hmm. because now, now we were moving on to a personal level. Yeah. And from then onwards, God then inspired you and gave you the tools to go and do video of all that you had seen. You'd lost many of your images. How did that happen? How did God send you onto or on this great trip to put a, together this movie on creation. Hard to believe really how it happened. Because once you saw the world and have photographed it and you know you can't use these images for a movie, animated thing. I mean, I gave a promise. Of course, I didn't know the timing, but I thought I must go here and there and do some shots and how I'm going to use a video camera. Is it any different than doing photography and, and all that? But God provided.
AD provided the first video camera for me, AD Germany, and I went on a trip. And it was like when we married in 2007, in June, I said to her, I'm going to travel a lot by God's grace to do what I have promised. I want to do that movie on creation. And I have never believed, but God just sent me around this earth several times. He provided the means. I was working still in the business and everything ran just great. I made so much money that I would never really have to think about a creation movie. It was rolling well. And I went to so many wonderful places I have not been before doing photography. Now I was able to capture images. And I found there's places that are so attractive that they would perfectly fit into the creation movie. And I had an idea of how it should work. And then in 2008, I said, Lord, I've got a problem. I'm so busy with my customers. I make so much money. I, if I go on like that, the movie will never be finished. But I've given you a promise. You know, Walter, when God touches your heart, I made my devotional time up to three hours. I got up extra early. And I never went to bed without reading the Bible for an hour, hour and a half. I was just so filled. I'm missing that time. Really. Life can be so busy that you forget about your your personal time with God. And it was an impact in my life that I, I knew I can't, I can't manage that myself. It must come from somewhere else. But it was inspirational. And then doing, going on these trips, I, I just thought, saw the whole place, the whole earth under new light. And we had conversations on how I should put it together. And then 2008 came and I said, I have given a promise to finish that movie. I didn't have a particular time, really, but I wanted to finish it as quickly as possible. You know what then happened. You gave up your entire business, used the money and produced the movie. But I went on my knees first. And I said, Lord, if you want that movie to be ever finished, you got to take away all my customers, each and every customer. And Within six months, they have all died. All. It was a successful graphic communication design company. All of them died. They lost the largest company I worked for, lost 25,000 people. Lost their job. They all went bankrupt. True. That was powerful. And I wasn't sure, is that now my prayer? Or is God, God releasing me here from whatever? But that is impossible. But I was free to go. You know where we went for our honeymoon? Where did you go? Sweden. Oh. So I said, I really would like to do some camping holidays. And we had a VW, a Volkswagen bus, T4, with a folding roof, California model. I said, okay, sounds great. At least I can do some photography because he loves to sleep in and I'm the one getting up like 3, 4 a.m. to do photography. So I took all my equipment, went on that trip, and it was a wonderful, wonderful time. But I've never been in Sweden before, never been in Norway before. It wasn't something that was attractive to me. I always want to go to the south. I love deserts, heat, uh, rainforests, and all these animals in Africa. And so when we were looking around, we said, this is quite a beautiful country. And I said to her, Shouldn't we buy a small hut, a place somewhere, because it was really cheap in those days, and we could live next to a river and just buy that thing and leave it there and come back several times a year to relax. I said, that'd be a good, good idea. And I knew the money was reserved for the creation movie. And I didn't want to spend it for something else. And we went, we even met some real estate agents and we looked at some property. Nothing fell in place. And then in 2009, we forgot about the idea. So in 2008, I was completely released. I worked with a person, Ilya Bonda, who was very well and educated in editing. And he knew so many things on how to put the thing together. So I delivered a lot of material 
everything else that was impossible to shoot, I bought. And we put, or he put the whole thing first together. And um, it was October 2009, the 3rd of October. I picked up the phone and I called you. And I said, Walter, we are just about to be finished with the movie. Do you want to keep your promise and come to be the key speaker? And you instantly said, yes. I said, really? Yes. When is it going to take place? I said, in January 2010, 2010. And he said, I'll do it. I hang up. I was jumping into the air, totally filled with joy, knew the movie's going to be finished, and we're going to go to do some live presentations. Now, your idea was not only to show a movie which would touch the heart because of the beautiful scenery and everything, but to couple it to the creation account and give it a scientific basis. That's why you wanted a lecture yeah. and you wanted the movie, so you wanted to combine the, the intellectual portion with the emotional portion. That's right. And th together they would form a powerful tool to present to the world that there is a creator God. That's part of the first angel's message. It is. Worship God and give him the glory. Yeah. For the hour of judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, etc., etc. Et and I knew you are very talented, experienced in giving that lecture. No, and, you I know, need God as much as you need him. But, you know, even before we, the movie was created, I needed to have some insights. And I can't recall how many times I was allowed to call you. I know you were very busy, but you were giving me insight, things that I've not heard before on the creation account. See, it's one thing to read it, but to hear from a scientist on how it is in our present time and how it could be put into practice. And a certain things that were totally strange to me, but we managed to put them into animation and all that. It was so helpful, and it was already working together with you before we actually went on a tour. And then the next day, it was October 4, something happened in your life. Yes, I was about to come, and disaster struck, right? As always. Whenever there is something big that God wants done, the devil is always lurking in the shadows. Sonica went out of the house. That's my wife, Sonica, yes. And she got involved in an accident of, its, of a rather greater proportion. Yes, she was, she was running outside to tell her daughter that was about to leave, our daughter, that she shouldn't leave before we said a prayer. And she stumbled over a pile of sticks and she flew into the air and came down over the pile, you know, like a... And she totally smashed her, her thigh and her hip. She totally disintegrated them. And uh, that was just before I was supposed to go. It must have been a hard time for you. Yes, there were a couple of serious challenges then. It's interesting that when they did the surgery and they saw the, the extent of the damage, the surgeon interrupted the, the surgery and came outside to question me as to how this thing had happened. Now, I wasn't there when it happened. I was in the field with someone repairing some water pipes. And he was... He was uh, almost aggressive in the way that he inquired of me what had happened. And then I realized that he was saying that it was as if someone had taken a massive pole and had beaten her to a pulp. It couldn't just be from a fall, he said. So he actually wondered whether I had had something to do with it. Fortunately... There were many witnesses that I had nothing to do with it. It was an extraordinary experience, and you cannot imagine the extent of the damage from something as mundane as a fall. But it happened, yes. Mm. And it's related to your agreement to come. Satan was furious. 
he knew that if that is really taking place, something big might happen, and something big did happen. You came in January, and we have booked eight places in Germany and one in Austria to do live presentations in larger halls, yes. something that never took place in Germany anywhere, whether from our church or anywhere else, simply with the word, the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. saw all that he had made, and it was very good. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Huge posters pamphlets, and we were, it was a hungry church. Whomever I called, and we only had these eight presentations, and the people said, we, we would like to be in there, say, well, we may continue in fall. But in January, you came, I mean, you had evangelistic outreach during the time, taking care of Sonica. She was almost, almost paralyzed down there for like three months she or so. It took her more than a year to be able to walk. Uh, Unaided, yes. Yeah. I mean, everything you had to do during that time span. It must have been a really difficult time. Yes, and we had to find people to take care of her because she couldn't do things by herself. She couldn't move. Yeah. So, yes, it was challenging, but God opened the way. And uh, fortunately, you and I are blessed with having wives that understand the need for this special outreach so that they understand that it, it takes a sacrifice often. You cannot, you have to put your personal comforts aside. But the blessing that you receive out of actually answering the call mm. far outweighs any inconvenience that you might have had or sorrow or pain. Yeah, absolutely true. And then a big thing started. And I did not know what's going to come. I think looking back, even for you, it was an overwhelming experience. It was very big, yes. It was one of the most powerful entering wedges that we had had for a long, long time. You just said the first angel's message. If it's going to be proclaimed boldly, it must have an effect, right? Yes, absolutely. Honor him who made heaven and earth. And we wanted to do that fully heartedly, not knowing pretty. I, I, mean, I wasn't experienced in that field at all. You know, in the company, you do communication. But for me, it was a difference speaking before these managers or customers and all that. You would speak about creative ideas to support their field, to make their goods looking good, whatever. But it's here to do something to honor God. It really moved me often to tears. I don't know, I, I didn't recognize myself and sometimes even shivering, saying, oh, how am I going to do that? Am I worthy enough? God, are you really allowing that to happen? Well, what happened? First night, presentation opened. And we were just putting up the whole technique. You know what we forgot? To pray. Uh -huh. You know what happened? The table broke down and the computer fell. Remember? Yes, yes. And I've got a very good friend who I traveled to nine different countries, three or four continents. And that night he said, you know what I liked? He's still an atheist, sort of. He said to me, Henry, when that professor at that very moment took control over 
the first thing you said, and it was very powerful to him, scanning the situation. You turned around and spoke to everyone and said, we have forgotten to pray before we started. It was the last time we haven't prayed. And you prayed, we put out the computer and it ran. It was the main data on that computer. It was risky to do it with an SSD drive external. Everything worked fine, the presentation started. 650 to 680 people in a hall of 750. But it was just the beginning. Every other place, seven to go, was so packed that we couldn't fit in a single soul. And sometimes they were standing around the edges, and sometimes that broke the law because only a certain number of people were allowed. Hanging in the curtains, wanted to watch the movie. People were laying underneath the screen of a six, eight, or 10 meter screen, depending on the whole size we had, laying underneath and looking up the screen, barely saw anything, just wanted to be part of it. And the people of the halls, the ones that were the overseers, they said, this will never fill the hall. There'll be nobody here. But they caused traffic jams. People were, they had to get the police to organize the traffic to get the people in there. That's it. And then you had your protesters. Oh, yeah. And you had those people that were anti-creation and they would come in and they would shout at us and they would scream and say that uh, this should be forbidden, there's no such thing as God and everything is evolution and the city should never have allowed you to speak here and they wanted to take us to court and it was chaos, but the people, they came. They came. And we made an estimate that was more than 65% of all the people coming were non-Adventists. We reached out to 10,000 10, people in that first stretch of eight presentation. And I remember little Austria, one place. It was during the time of the carnival, organized with all the setup already for that, for that cruel festival. Anyhow, we put up the screen went in there and we said, how many people you have? How, how many people can fit in here? And he said, 750. said, okay. And he looked at me and said, you'll never fill it. So at about 6.30, I looked at my watch, 6.30, and I looked into the hall. It was packed. 750 people were in there. And I looked outside and I saw cars coming. And then he was running towards me and he said, What's going on? I said, oh, you tell me. I said, what's going on? I've never seen that before. At seven o'clock, they closed the door. The fire department came to lock the door. We had a traffic jam out there. And I looked around and he made a calculation. 1,250 people were in the hall. There was 500 people beyond what he was allowed to do. He said, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get in trouble. Now, these words I have heard before. And then someone came and he said, it's almost like the latter rain. The people are coming and we don't know where to put them. They're yearning for the message. It was amazing. It was amazing. We went from stage to stage, from place to place, and had 10,000 viewers after eight presentations. That was big. And I remember when we said goodbye to one another, that last prayer, you poured out your heart and you said, Lord, thank you. I did not believe anything like that could ever happen in Germany. And you left for South Africa. And then we were, we said, what are we gonna do now? Walter is gone, no live speaker. What should we do? And we just said, we continue on. We've got his recordings. He's not there live, but you know, does it really make a difference? Well, it does, because Q&As afterwards are very important to interact with the people. But we somehow felt that we needed to jump into your position, at least to explain some of the question. We don't have the knowledge, we are not a professor, we are not educated in that field, but we can argument with the Bible. And it gives us a lot of power, and we did. So we went and organized 28 presentations throughout Germany. That was the German creation tour. It followed up by the Swiss creation tour, by the Austrian creation tour, by the Netherlands creation tour, by the Spanish creation tour, it did in Italy. It was just everywhere. And it was at the end of 2010, 
you were gone since January and haven't returned because we were so busy with amazing discoveries to do that tour. 35,000 people came. Every place was packed. And TV stations came. Pastors and, 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 and what do you call them? Yeah, pastors, possibly. Preachers from other denominations came. They've never heard things like that. I could tell you story after story on experiences we made. One sticks out. It was a hole in Bremen. 500 people should have been in there. And about two days before the presentation, the guy who organized the stuff, he said, Henry, I don't think Ralf Petruska was his name. I don't think the hole will be enough. I said, why? Because during the time we were sharing the flyers and the folders and the, the posters, people came to smash them, cut them in pieces. And for me, that's an indication of there's some riot going on. It seems it's going to be a, a larger evening than 500. When there is a war and Satan is angry, then you must know that God is at work. Absolutely. He sees something behind the scenes yeah. that other people don't we see. We can't. We can't. And it was, it was true. Many hundreds and thousands of posters were replaced and put into the garbage bin. Flyers were rejected. But you know what, Walter? We shared more than one million flyers. One million. Every single place that we went to received between 20 and 30,000 flyers. And every flyer carried the message of God. So far above more people knew about the creation the, the website exploded by the many hits that were there. And so, Bremen, two days before the presentation, he decided we're going to get the larger hall within the building. 1,250 people capacity. What happened? It was packed. It was packed. How would he? It wasn't a sale of a ticket. He could get orientation. Oh, we've sold 400 tickets or so. It was all for free, free entrance. You can freely come, you can freely go. But there were no ticket sales. And he still had the impression he should take the larger hole. And I'm glad he did. 1,250 people came. The other denominations and, and, and the riots they were just, oh, insane. And I said, Lord, that's just an indication that the message is rocking the people, shaking them. beginning, God created the heavens and the earth.
Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And so at the end of 2010, the phone rang after the creation tour, and I got a phone call from Sweden. And a ministry there called Lifestyle, they said, hey, would you like to come? Because we are having a, a very special event, a five-year celebration of my TV channel. I would like to show you a creation movie. Would you like to come live in person? I said, yeah, I could do that. And remember... Three years ago, we gave up on the, actually a year and a half ago, we gave up on the idea of Sweden. I went there totally neutral in feelings. I touched the Swedish ground, I didn't have whatsoever feeling. Just there to present. And I knew Ted Wilson will be the key speaker on that event. And I prepared one DVD 
for him in the English language spoken by Alden Ho. And I wanted to give it to him. So the presentation was Friday night. And Tad and his wife Nancy were sitting on one of the rows. And I presented it to the five-year celebration. Packed my stuff. And on Sunday morning, I wanted to approach Tad Wilson to present the DVD to him. Just to give him as a little gift. And he turned around, saw me, and he said, Would you mind, please go and find a room for us? And I said, A room? Yes, I would like to talk to you. I mean, I can give it to you right here. We don't need to discuss. Go, please, and find a room. I would like to talk to you personally. And he was surrounded by a number of people. So I went, I found a room, I told him, here we are. He came, locked the door. We kneeled down, first thing, he prayed a prayer. And then he unfolded a project to me. And he said, that is my vision of your movie. We would like to get hold of it. I say, why? Because it fits perfectly to our theme, tell the world. That sounds great. Really? I, you know, who was I? Just doing some images of creation, presenting it, working together with you, getting the feedback from people. But here was the president who was interested in that particular production. And so I wasn't sure whether that is all true. I went back home. My head was exploding. And then one day I came home. It was in February. I had a phone call on my answering machine. Pressed. Hi, Henry. This is Williams Costa from the General Conference Communication Department. I would like to speak to you about your movie. What? Pressed again. I listened to that message several times and I said, what's going on? So I called him back and he said, yes, it's me. I'm the communication director. Ted Wilson has spoken to me. We would like to adapt your movie. I said, are you serious? Yes, for a certain reason. Well, to make a very long story short, he came he wanted to see one of the presentations we did in Berlin. He said, we would like to adapt that. We would like to work with you. And furthermore, the whole music of the creation movie was created by a young Adventist guy, Dominic Buchner. And he was very young and unexperienced, but very, very talented. And I asked him, because I knew about his composition skills, if he would write the music. And he said, I can't, it's too big. I said, no, let's, let's work together, you know, I don't have an idea how it is going to be. And without seeing any video clips, he composed the whole music with a wonderful way, in a wonderful way, so good that the very talented communication director, Williams Costa, who is an, a professional piano player, saw the potential in that music. And he called the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra, and he asked them to play in the song, every single song. You imagine that young guy, he was 24, 23, something like that, went to Prague, got invited there, to participate in the recordings with about 100 musicians or more on stage. And when his first notes were played... Wasn't he sick? Very much so. I was so glad that he did that job. I wanted to take them on one of my trips down to Chile, up in the mountains, and we were going up to four or five thousand meters, and God avoided him to come along, and that saved his life. He had a heart, a hole in his heart. He would have died on that trip. Satan knocked him down. He got sick, and I thought he's going to die. His parents were totally off. They said, what's going on? He studied instead of Becoming a doctor, he became a theologian. Today, he's one of the pastors in Baden-Württemberg. But he was struck down heavily, heavily. But he composed a music that was gladly received by these professional musicians, and they played in the whole track. Absolutely top professional musicians. Welcome back. Adventist World Church headquarters last month screened a powerful new film celebrating the biblical account of creation. The film features a narration of the Genesis creation story set to footage of nature and instrumental music. Adventist filmmaker Henry Strober says his four-year journey around the globe collecting footage reaffirmed his own belief in God's creative power. Williams Costa Jr. has this report. In 2006, German Adventist filmmaker Henry Strober felt called to celebrate the beauty of creation. 
He wanted to present evidence of God's creative power in a compelling way that would make audiences rethink their views on origins. The result? A film called The Creation captures the variety and scope of the nature. Adventist leaders watched the film and decided it was a perfect fit for the church's focus on creation in 2013 and 14. The authority of God in creating this earth uh, is linked to just about every principle and doctrine that we have. And all of those doctrines, of course, are focused upon Christ. Uh, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit participating in creation is so fundamental to just about everything that, that we believe. If you take that away, you dismantle so much of what makes us Christians and Seventh-day Adventists. And this film is going to underscore in such a powerful way the dramatic uh, creation that God uh, accomplished in six days and then capped it with the Seventh-day Sabbath. Strober was working for an advertising firm when he first started working on the film Creation. He says it soon became clear that he would never finish unless he fully devoted himself to the project. In a moment of surrender, Strober asked God to take away his clients as a sign. Within a few short weeks, he had lost his biggest client. With a renewed sense of direction, Strober and his team began creating a film that would bring viewers closer to God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Strober spent four years collecting 100 hours of high-definition footage and more than 100,000 photos from five continents. Strober and his team edited those images to illustrate the six days of creation recorded in the Bible. Music composed by Adventist musician Dominic Buchner and performed by the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra tied the story together. Early screenings of the creation began in Europe in 2010. Almost 75% of the first audiences were community members unfamiliar with the Adventists' belief in a six-day creation. Strober remembers looking into the eyes of audience members and immediately knowing that God has touched their hearts and minds. The experience was a powerful affirmation of his own belief in God's power. If we skip creation, there is no need for us anymore to believe in the Bible. If we skip creation, we forget about the salvation plan. If we skip creation, there is no need for us for the Sabbath. If we skip creation, we may forget about being a Seventh-day Adventist. And that's what we're called for, to proclaim the first angel's message, honor him who had made heaven and earth. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. Adventist leaders 
are expected to officially release the creation for worldwide distribution this year. At the same time, plans are in place to dub the film in languages spoken around the world and make it available for local screenings. People around the world are going to be absolutely thrilled to have an affirmation of this creation. And not only that, people who have never really thought about creation in a, in a dynamic way are going to be attracted to this precious truth that helps us to see that, that God was, is, and always will be. He is our creator, our redeemer, and our soon coming king. And the film helps us to know that. It is part of that fourth angel of Revelation 18, providing incredible opportunities to touch lives all throughout this globe. Next week, during annual council, we will debut the creation. The earth is a witness. A general conference communication department project coordinated by the communication department and our faith and science council and Geoscience Research Institute. Local churches and the church's media will use this new creation video in outreach events to the community. At the end of the creation video, shown in a local church, a local church will introduce people to many more follow-up programs leading to more direct evangelistic activities and meetings. These programs will draw people closer to Jesus and to His truth and illuminate the earth with God's glory. And I said to the General Conference, I have started working in this movie with Professor Walter Feit. And I'm, I'm going to continue to do that. And they said, fine to us, no problem. But we would like to add a few more scientists to it. I said, yeah, go ahead. Makes it more colorful. The music, the images, and the message of the biblical record of creation has such conversion power, it will help many people. Professor fight 35 minutes of a recording, and then one hour of a movie. It makes hour and a half program, and the people went home. The brains were filled, and the hearts were filled, and both together made an impact on the people.
is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night.
there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night.
He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, 
creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds. The livestock according to their kinds. And all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Then God said, Let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God 
blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. By the seventh day, God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. sitting here and suddenly this huge elephant appears in the bush behind us just just a few meters away from us this is the largest uh, this is the largest animal in Africa it is well known for its aggression it has killed many people <laughs> 